Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be painting this really fun and easy knit dotted mug. It's kind of a knit pattern and I think it's really cute. Um, so we're going to go ahead and walk through uh, the process and all the tools and materials. We're taking kind of a good look at it here so you can get a, a peek at to, at to what this pattern looks like. And it's really simple. And it's really, really cute if you put it in a little set. Look how cute that is. Oh, I just love it. So um, we're going to go ahead and do this project, and I really do hope that you enjoy it. For tools and materials, I'm going to be using my regular dotting tools. I've got a black mug just from the Dollar Tree. I'll clean it off with some alcohol. Um, so you can see how it's ultimately going to look once we do the dotting on it. Very simple. So when you go to the Dollar Tree, it's important, I think, to, at least I always have to do this, is to buy my things in a set. I usually buy at least three. And if I'm doing mugs, I try to buy four. And then the colors we're using, we will be using the DecoArt line. I'll be using two colors of gloss enamel. I'll be using uh, white and festive green. And then I'll be using a multi-surface satin lipstick for the red. I have trouble finding true red at my local store so I'm also going to take apart this little um, tape measure. I found these at Hobby Lobby and they're really nice because they're very thin and so they're a nice size for my craft project. So I just pull it out of this little got a little retractable um, gadget there but I'm just going to pull it out and cut it off because I don't want the weight of that um, of that gadget and I'll figure out if I can do something else with that and so see how it's a really nice kind of thin uh, tape measure very inexpensive I'm going to clean my mug with some isopropyl alcohol just get it on a little pad and get that mug really cleaned up you want to be sure all the fingerprints and dirt and grime are off of the mug so that you can um, make sure that you have good adhesion for your paint so I'll just go ahead and get that all cleaned up. Now I'm going to mark down from the top lip of the mug. And don't forget that when you're dotting, you need to leave enough space so that lips are not touching the paint. It's non-toxic paint, but it's not food grade, so you want to make sure that you do that. And then I just place my um, tape measure, and I'm using my Soline uh, ceramic marker or ceramic um, lead pencil. I love this thing and it gives me just enough of a line that I can see it and then I'm going to go down about three quarters of an inch and put my second line there. I taped it down a little bit so it'd be a little easier for me to uh, hold that in place because the mug curves and then you can see my lines there. Uh, they're about three quarters of an inch apart and these will be my base lines. I'm just adding a little extra so that I can see it well. Okay, I'm going to start with the gloss white and my largest nail dotter. You can use a size that works for, the, for you and for the mug that you're going to use. And the first thing I'm going to do is just put down my center line. Now, I am going to start in the center front of my mug because um, if there's any like places where it gets a little wonky, I want those to be towards the handle and not on the front of the mug. So this is just a simple matter of placing a line of dots. The thing I'll tell you about the line of dots, I am leaving a little bit of space, right? They're not bumping right up against each other. There's a little bit of space because I'm going to go in with another row here. And you can kind of see that here. And then I'll go in and do the second line. I want to get my lines down first. These are my anchoring lines. And go ahead and get the same row all the way around. And just finish that up. Okay. Go under the handle a bit. A little tougher to get under that handle. So decide if you want to kind of end it right before the handle so you don't have to struggle with that. It's up to you. And there's my two lines. Those look great. Now I'm going to start my knit 
pattern and I'm going to start again in the center and this is just going, going to put a little bit of a triangle here, three dot triangle above the line and then I'll drop down and do it below the line and we're going to get kind of a zigzag effect. Then I'll do that all the way around above and below. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still doing Christmas projects. Um, I had hoped to get these out earlier, but you know, things get in the way and um, I don't get them done. So I find myself kind of rushing towards the end to get those last ideas down, <laughs> get them finished. So we'll just follow that all the way around one on top of the line and then one below the line and I'll just keep that even pattern going all the way around and again I start in the middle um, so that if there's any you know misplaced because I didn't count the dots so I don't know how many there are it's just too much trouble to do that um, so I might end up you know with some that are not perfectly spaced as I get towards the handle but that's okay because I started in the middle I feel pretty good about how those are going to work out so I do one side and then I just move and do the other side When you see me pause like that, I'm just cleaning off my tool. Okay, so I'm just going to go all the way around on that first line and get my zigzag pattern down. And then I'll drop down to the second line, the center line that I put. Repeat the pattern on that line. This is where you can see I'm kind of, you know, trying to get underneath that handle. And you can decide if you want to stop before the handle. I think if I were to do this again, I might, I might stop before the handle. So let's go ahead and go down to the bottom line. And we just do exactly the same thing. I'm going to start in the middle. Uh, but I'm going to try to line it up to the top pattern. Now I won't be able to line it up perfectly. It's always going to be a little bit off because the mug is um, narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. So I'm not going to get a complete lineup, but I want to get uh, fairly close uh, and line it up as best I can. So I'll go ahead and start the zigzag, same exact pattern on that bottom line. And I'll do that all the way around. Okay, so I've got that pattern all the way around, and now I'm ready to move on. I'll use the lipstick, which is that bright, pretty red, and my K 10.5, 6.5 millimeter, and I'll drop some little bits of red. And I'm kind of putting those dots in the um, flat spot on each one of those zigzags, and I can fit two in there. And I'll do that all the way around.
And once I have those red dots, I'll use the same tool and I'll go in with the uh, festive green and I will go above the uh, line and below the line to put those green dots in. And now I'm going at the point of each one of those zigzags and I'm using my G6 four millimeter and placing a dot of red right above those little points. And I'll do that all the way on the top and the bottom. And get those all the way around. And once I get all those dots down, I will go ahead and let it dry. And then I'm going to come back in with one of my smaller nail dotters. And I'm going to put a little crown of three right above each one of those green dots and then just one dot above the red. And I'll do that all the way around on the top and the bottom. And once I've got all of that done, I'll set it aside to dry and then I will come back in with some top dotting. And I'm going to do my first layer of top dotting on each of the colored dots and I'll just drop a bit of white using a smaller tool, of course. And I'll go in and do that layer. and I'll set that aside to dry. I'll come back in and my, do my final layer of top dotting and what I'll do is use the festive green on the red dots and the red on the green dots and so that'll give just a little bit of uh, variance to the color depth there and I think that'll look really nice. And here's a look at that. You can see how I've completed that. I think that looks really good. And of course, then I'll set it aside to dry for the four days. This is deco art, so I'll do the enamel. I'll set it aside to dry for four days, and then I'll cure it in the oven uh, based on the manufacturer's instructions. And I've done two, so I have a little set. That's really cute. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, this kind of last minute, it doesn't have to be a Christmas project. It can be just a winter uh, project because of that little knit design. I hope you enjoyed the project. Please let me know. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe or leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. I really enjoy hearing from you. Thanks so much for joining me in my studio. Take care.